Greetings friends! No matter what location you decide to set up and operate a homestead, there's pros and cons to every location on this earth. Whether it be wrestling with challenges associated with the climate, or whether it be dealing with challenges associated with the topography and layout of an area. And, but whether you have challenges or not, those challenges can also be turned into positive depending on how you look at it. Two of the challenges that I deal with here on our homestead and where we run home, our homestead is one, the majority of the property is on a slope. So there's challenges and difficulties associated with that, but that, that challenge can also lead to a positive with being able to uh, get water to flow down the hill where, in areas that we want it to be. And another challenge that we deal with is a majority of the property is wooded. So that challenge makes it more difficult to move area animals around and set up different infrastructure in areas. So that's one of the challenges that I'm working with today and trying to flip it around and make it a positive. This area right here behind me is where we had our our guardian dogs outside who have done a fabulous job of keeping predators and things out of our garden they've done a fantastic job with that before we had dogs on the property deer would come in and they would eat from our garden and it would just it would ruin things we basically lost all of our tomatoes one time from deer then we brought the dogs on completely went away but i'm making some changes we're setting up different things and and tweaking some air, some of our infrastructures and our system here on the homestead. And right now, here recently, we've been integrating the dogs with our goats, and hopefully soon we can add sheep and other things like that on as well. And moving them together in movable uh, fencing, that's the plan. But right here, we're gonna redo this area. The dogs, since the dogs are moving on and we're transitioning them to our other livestock, this area right here, is going to be well first i need to remove these trees and i want to have breeding systems and areas for our ducks to be in right now we've been moving our ducks around which i still plan to do and actually our ducks also get a lot of access to the pond and you want to manage that but that's something to talk about in another episode but i need a more permanent area for our ducks to be in and an area that we can manage well and we could we could bring mulch in and removing some of these trees is going to enable us to do that as well as bring some more light into the garden and other areas like back over here where we want some more grass to grow for our goats, goats and our sheep but before i get started in removing some of these trees first i need to take down this fence let's get it done All right, so this is turning out to be a little bit more of a workout than I thought it was gonna be. Because we're on a slope, it, the water and rain has created some erosion that has made the soil go on top of the bottom of the fence. So it's making it really hard to pull it out. And the pins that we had holding the fence down too, it's making all that hard. So I'm having to use the broad fork to loosen it up, the soil up so I can pull the fence and the bottom pins out. So it's getting my heart rate up a little bit. And I don't have the special tool to take the T-post out. I knew that going into it, but and I'm having to just work to get those out. But that's not as hard as getting the bottom of the fence up and loose from the soil. Well, I'm gonna get back to it. I think Lacey is feeding the goats now. It's time to go feed the goats for today. They're probably a little annoyed with me because this is a little later than what I normally feed them. So they're probably going to be screaming at me when we get over here.
Well, I have all my goat food and as normal, here they are waiting on me. My fat girls right here, aren't you? Yeah? Here we go. There's one. Here, Olga. Here's yours, Hazel. So the other day we added one of our dogs in here with our goats and uh, it's been totally fun even though there's a learning curve between the goats and the dog the dog doesn't he doesn't even care if they're around he's never really cared if there's cats or any other animals um, but I think the goats are the ones that have had more of an issue see there's Cyrus over there he's just hanging out laying in the Sun when we first put him in here I think Hazel was the one that had a real problem with him. These other two girls, they were kind of afraid of him and they would get um, far off, but Hazel would actually come after him, which I find it really funny because she won't buck up to these other two goats and they'll steal her food and everything, but she'll go after the dog that can bite her. So I always find that a little interesting. I'm kind of wishing she would just buck up to them and not let them steal her food so I don't have to stand out here while she eats. Here's the fatty pants right here. She could eat all day long. Isn't that right, Olga? Isn't that right? Well, they're all fed. I'm gonna pick up these buckets and I know Mike has another project for me to do, so I'm gonna go see if I can help him out. Turn the pins back on. Bye, girl. I think I have more wood splitting in my future. I do believe that's what he told me that he needed me to do this afternoon. We'll see. Pretty funny, isn't it? So what all you been doing over here? I see a lot of fence down. Yeah, the fence was a lot harder than I thought it would be. So we got that part up, especially where the, the soil, just the erosion kind of caked over the bottom of the fence, yeah. made it challenging. And then this other side over here, where some trees and vines had gotten into the yeah, fence. I see. That made it a little fun. I see that you're so, taking um, some of that out over there. That's crazy how fast things can get out of control. But we're making progress and we're moving forward. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start just cutting down some of the trees, starting with the smaller ones. So what I'm thinking, if you and the kids could go ahead and use the Sun Joe and, and uh, Maul and just go ahead and start splitting wood because uh, I got a feeling after I start cutting some trees down, we're going to have some more logs to split. So go oh. ahead and catch up on some of the logs that we've cut from just a couple days ago and uh, I'll start getting some more ready for you. Okay. Hey boy. Hey. Are you gonna help me split some wood? Yeah. yeah. You need to go get a jacket on before we start? Yep. Okay, we'll go find you a jacket. Josiah, you're gonna put the Sun Joe together? Yep. Get to it, boy. So this is a good lesson right here. This little um, log splitter can put a lot of pressure on a piece of wood and cause it to split. But sometimes they don't want to split because of knots and things like that. Whenever you see one that doesn't want to split, like this right here, and it's really hard. I would rather us just take the tension off of it and not split it and not run the risk of hurting the splitter 
or anyone else if it kind of shot out to the side. So go ahead and take the pressure off. Now stop it. Now go ahead and take that piece of wood off. So why don't you get some of these other pieces that we cut down the other day and start splitting those. Here, hold on. I'm gonna make sure it gets in the middle of the wood. Now go. Well, the sun has been out all day, but it's decided to go behind the clouds and it's getting cooler. So I'm gonna run, go get me another jacket. Josiah, you got this for right now? Yep. Okay, I'll be back to help you in a minute. Yeah, can you get my coat? I don't even think Find it's- your back up. Yes. As tight as it can go. Here. Here's me. There's one more. There you go. Now you're doing a great job. <laughs> well, we gotta get all this done because it's supposed to rain tomorrow and we really don't want all this wood getting wet. So we're gonna split it and then cover it with one of our old billboard tarps over there so it'll stay dry. So let's get busy, buddy. Yeah. Okay, Josiah, since some of these pieces are too long to go on the wood splitter, and um, right now I just can't uh, split anymore with the mall. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all these pieces right here and just stack them up really good. And then we're gonna take our tarp and put it over the top. Think you can hang with me a little while longer and do that? Yep. All right, making some progress. However, I don't think that I'm gonna be able to complete as much of this project today as I thought I was going to be able to at the start of the day. But that's just the way it works sometimes. And it's beginning to get cloudier and cloudier and the sun is uh, gradually moving in position <laughs> to set for the day to end. So uh, let's start wrapping it up and call it a day. And also rain is in the forecast, so I do definitely wanna wrap, wrap this up. So what I think I'm gonna do next is just uh, chop up the trees that I have cut down and then come back to it another day, start working on removing some more of the trees. And one of the major things that I'm planning to do here with setting the ducks up here is to have a better system for them. Also, I plan to have and start 
a breeding program so that way we can use the ducks to reproduce future generations here on the homestead. So that's what I keep in mind to help me to push through some of the stuff that I don't want to be doing. Can't say that I want to be doing it. Even though I enjoy cutting, doing some lumberjack skills and cutting trees down from time to time. Uh, it's fun. It's manly. Well, time to get back to work. Make sure you stay tuned to see how this project turns out and the progress we make. So uh, as we're taking down these trees, uh, they'll also serve as firewood for different things, whether it be inside the house, in our yurt, or uh, just have a nice fire outside. Back to work. Thank <laughs> you.